students so in this lecture we will be talking about uh, ionic crystal and when an ionic crystal uh, for example nac is consisting of one cation and one anion when these two form a crystal then it's called ionic crystal and when these sort of crystals are uh, subject to electromagnetic uh, radiation uh, they exhibit two optical absorption modes due to a dielectric dispersion relation. So the first one is called uh, transverse optic mode or TO mode and the second one is called uh, longitudinal optic mode or LO mode. Now the T mode is uh, symbolized by omega T, whereas the longitudinal mode is symbolized by omega L. And uh, a forbidden region of high reflectivity Challenge or residual region exists. It's called Restralin. relationship between omega L and omega T is again uh, omega L is equal to omega T into epsilon naught by epsilon infinity where epsilon naught and epsilon infinity are static is low frequency and optical dielectric constants. Now, strong interaction of uh, electromagnetic waves with uh, long wavelength TO mode focus. So strong interaction occurs between EM wave and long wavelength or shorter frequency TO mode. And 
the resonant absorption is uh, produced at omega t which is easily detected by deflection and transmission studies and uh, there is another type of absorption called magneto optic absorption so what we do is uh, <coughs> uh, it is actually in the case of uh, large external fields Applied, and uh, it is in the continuum of states and in the valence and conduction band of semiconductor are quantized into a set of semi discrete Landau levels. due to this magneto optic absorption and which interacts with incident radiation to produce characteristic absorption spectra. So these Landau levels interact with the external magnetic field to produce the absorption spectra. And the measurement of interband magneto optical absorption uh, gives information on the band gap, the degeneracy of the bonds and also the reduced effective mass and the g factor of the individual bands so that information can be obtained another type of absorption is uh, called uh, uh, plasma resonance absorption and what happens is that in the there are free electrons and they, uh, they collectively oscillate. Then there go collective oscillations and this is, these are actually called the plasma oscillations. And uh, these oscillations are due to the Coulomb interaction with the ions of the surface. So, uh, due to Coulombic interaction with the ions of the ladder. And uh, plasma frequency of a free electron. So for the free electron, the plasma frequency is equal to uh, 4 pi Ne into E square divided by N star to the power 1 by 2, where Ne is the, uh, this N is the density of electrons, this is the effective mass, and uh, this we have taken epsilon naught is equal to 1 for free space. Now, this uh, plasma frequency uh, omega p, this omega p. It lies in the UV region, UV region for metals. And uh, for germanium, like semiconductor, the plasma oscillations 
occurred in higher carrier density balance point. Plasma oscillations occur in higher carrier density balance band and uh, in the IR or typical semiconductor region and it is in the IR region. This is typical of semiconductors. Uh, now it should be mentioned that uh, this relationship of omega p that we have written it is valid only for a small wave vector that means for lambda tending to infinity at the normally omega is equal to omega p to 1 plus 3 by 10 into vf square divided by lambda square into omega p square where uh, this vf is the Fermi velocity. Now this plasma oscillation can be uh, viewed as a kind of longitudinal optical phonon. Plasma oscillation can be used as a uh, longitudinal optical phonon in which the electron gas plays the part of negative ions. Uh, the electron gas plays the part of negative ions. Uh, since the gas has no uh, shear elastic modulus, since uh, gas has no shear elastic modulus, so we can say that omega t is equal to 0 and uh, omega l is actually equal to the plasma oscillation omega p. Now if these plasma oscillations are confined to the surface subject to boundary conditions and then the tangential component of the electric field will be continuous at the boundary. So if plasma oscillations uh, are restricted to the surface with some boundary conditions then the tangential component electric field tangential component of the electric field called ET uh, will be continuous across the boundary so ET1 is con and ET2 if there is a boundary so this will be continuous across the boundary so this might be a slight modification factor according to the constant.